Hello everyone, welcome back to Legend of Mana. Here's a neat little trick I haven't quite shown off yet. If you if you press select, you can see the uh, mana values of each area in the in the game. This actually becomes somewhat important in certain quests, but I'll discuss that when time arrives. For now, our world is still kind of spotty. We still need to fill in the holes. There isn't much to see here. All we have is a couple towns. Let's let's spice things up a bit. You know what? I want to put this thing here. Looks good. Ah yes. Who knew that there were ruins hidden in that lake? Let's check him out. Oh my. That sounds like a dinner to die for. Anyways, what's up on your night? What you got? So if you remember Tipo from the very first episode, um... Apparently she went to get tea leaves and got lost, so time to run around unexplored ruins and uh, find her. Also, here's a neat thing you could do: if you go to your event diary, you could uh, you could find tiny clues on what you're supposed to do in each quest. For now, though, basics of combat. We saw these dudes in the highway, but they're a lot stronger now. I mentioned this in one of the earlier episodes, but the farther a location is away from your main hut, from your home, the stronger everything is, going from shops to enemies. So these dudes that we basically wrecked at the beginning of the game are now actually giving us trouble. Still trying to get new skills. Not getting much from a somersault, unfortunately. Now here's a new enemy, it's a giant eyeball! They are... I believe they're callback, they're a returning monster from Seeker to Mana. In this game, they primarily give you status effects and die relatively quickly. Here's the interesting thing about this area. We come into a new race called the Flowerling. These are vastly different from the, uh, I don't want to say sapling, what are they called? You know what I'm talking about. They're not like the, the leafy people that we've been seeing before. They're entirely different people. The Flowerlings are more telepathic creatures. And they're going to be a big gimmick in this area. Sprouting is what I'm thinking of. Whoops. Uh, my head's all over the place today. But yeah, flowerlings and uh, sproutlings, two totally different races. Now that flowerling a while ago mentioned that there are operators and connections. And we can't quite get the Tipo right now, she's stuck behind a gate. I really want to like find a way to hack the game's files and see if I could talk to her through the gate, but uh, for now, let's just go with what we know. I do like the architecture of this area, but it doesn't really go anywhere. It has that, like, it has a Southern American feel to the look of the area, but we only go to this place twice, which is kind of sad, really. It's a neat area. Now this is probably what gets most people tripped up for this mission. The idea is that this, the uh, flowerlings are connected somehow via telepathy, and if you noticed a while ago, they were oriented to the gates seen here, with this dude acting as the center. So the idea is you want to rearrange the flowerlings in a way to open the gates. Wherever the idea is that you want to, if you want to open a gate, make sure a flowerling isn't in that area. 
And there are two kind of flowerlings. You got the males and female kinds to signify which gate is which. And right now, this one's getting on my nerves. There we go. This one is relatively quick. Kind of tricky, though, because if you talk to the top one, you're not going to be able to exit this area, so... Just, uh... Just talk to this one. That's all you need to do. Now, we haven't seen this enemy yet. This is another poltergeist. This is the chess piece. This is a fun enemy to play with. Normally, you'd see it earlier in the game if you used a specific artifact, but for here, we see it first up in this area, which is actually kind of odd. Now that I have high jump, I want to get a new ability. Because high jump is a pretty good ability. In the meantime, though, these guys. Now, consider the fact that we've already altered these guys and they are stuck in the same position as we were they were earlier. We are still editing them from a remote location, and that's how we're supposed to solve this puzzle. Oh yeah, here's another one. Now, I'm not sure if it was due to the crouch or to the beginning of the fight, but I was able to duck that laser, which is relative, which is kind of interesting. Look at that, Rabbi got his first kill. Too bad it was just a toy. And we got a new ST. We'll actually be seeing that in this mission, because um, I find a good opportunity to use it. Now the issue here is we cannot quite undo that female flowerling great gate correctly. Well, actually thinking about it we can, but we needed to talk to this guy first. That is probably the all important thing that would trip up new players in this mission. Typically when you're in a dungeon you don't think to talk to people, and that becomes really important in this area. Now we just need to go back to where we once were, and everything should be peachy. Oh, come on! Get it. Well, that was easier than before. Now, the funny idea is that a while ago, Tipo was saying that the gates kept on opening and closing. So consider the fact that we may have been causing her more trouble than she needed. Whoops. Also, we edited those dudes from a while ago, so now we can go to this small area. And if we wanted to undo what the flowerlings did and escaped, we wouldn't use these guys, but... Nah, let's just finish up things here. Can't believe I gotta talk to her again to open the door. So weird. Hey, Chestnut again. I always like fighting the Poltergeist. They're a neat, like, idea and concept for being dependent on enemy types. Like, it's a great excuse to find a way to get money, which is pretty good. It's hard to get money in this game as it is, so having an enemy dedicated to money is a good gesture. Now here's that new ST. Pretty strong. That was the near full bar of HP damage. Also, we got a new helmet. Let's put a little ribbon in our hair. 
Doesn't have much, but hey, at least we'll be pretty. Yeah, I haven't had opportunities to say before, but many enemies drop a unique piece of equipment, some of which don't really do much, but hey, it's a neat little gesture. Now here's the uh, mummy monkey. It's exactly what you imagine it would be. Too bad it's kind of a joke. Like, he does actually hit relatively hard, but the issue is I've played this game quite a bit, so I know how to, like, chain combos to infinity. And he gives a lot of EXP, which I'm hoping Rabbit would get, but it's just playing with me. Oh, so we got the double jump. Not a huge fan of the double jump, to be fair. Like, most games, when they have a double jump, I am pretty, like, hype about it. This game's double jump is not that hot. Where the hell have you been? Why can't you just wait at the gates? Oh, whatever. Let's get you out of here, Tipo. Yes, yes. We met in town. Yeah, uh, Onion Knight told us. You, you don't need to recap. That would have been good information to know, Tipo. So I don't know if it bit into our neck or just sucked the blood by proxy, but that vampire just kind of sucked our blood without us knowing. Now this boss's fight is kind of interesting. It's basically a succubus on crack, but if you notice that weird little cone, this is actually our first introduction to magic. We haven't had... Well, actually I'm... Forgot about Bud and Lisa, but most people don't do Bud and Lisa, so it's a little odd. But yeah, this is the first time we actually see magic outside of that small quest. Aside from that small threat, though, this boss is a joke. It's an upgraded enemy at best. Even Rabbi just kind of messes with it. <laughs> Good job, little buddy. I believe this is also the first in one of few enemies that uses shadow magic, but I'm not going to give it the time of day. I'm just going to play with my new ST. So, oh yeah, if you notice that weird hiccup in my jump, that was the double jump. It's just kind of displacing your sprite, no extra animations or anything. That's why I'm not a huge fan of it. And I also discovered a new thing with the jump ability just now. Do I play with it though? There we go. If you're in the middle of a jumping animation and you use an attack, you do a dive attack. And it has pretty hefty hit stun, so it's a great approach in order to, you know, start a combo. Okay, that was a pretty cool attack. Here's mine. Wow, that actually didn't do much. Now here's our first look at a uh, shade magic. It's skulls. All right. Your first magic you get out of this entire match and you use it there. Okay. Poor Rabbi, doesn't even get EXP. I'm sorry, buddy. Ooh. I think the gates were the cause of the problem there, Tipo. Onion Bro couldn't do a thing. And yeah, that's a good line from Onion Knight. 
A lot of nice lines in this game. That's the end of that adventure. Thank God. Hey, Tipo, I got a really strange adventure to tell you. See you folks next time.